If you're keeping up with my channel, you saw my awry last week. Two weeks ago, you saw my show it, and you heard my riding experience with helmets before these three. And finally, you get to see my x light Now, I personally haven't found any English-speaking videos about this helmet anywhere on the internet. I haven't even found more than one review. So, if you, like me, are super curious about this helmet, stick around after this quick disclaimer. All products discussed in my videos are unsponsored. This is just my personal experience with these helmets over a certain amount of time. Your mileage may vary. Welcome back to Kaidu Rider to see my third and final helmet. Now, as a quick note, if you're wondering how do I afford these three high-end helmets, well, remember my Arai and Shoei are bought in Japan at less than half of what most American prices are, and it's your head. If you're not going to spend money on your head, you probably shouldn't ride. And if you don't want a relatively luxuriant ride, you definitely ride less than me. I average between 20 and 40 thousand kilometers a year, but what is this? So the official name is x Lite X403 GT Ultra Carbon. You can see x Lite, and on the side you can see X403 GT Ultra Carbon. And it's carbon. And I can promise it's real carbon because I make carbon fiber parts for a living. As for why I bought this helmet, there are two reasons. The first is my Shoei GT Air 2 is at its limits. And two, you can see my Arai video to see that there are things I don't like about it. I am hoping this helmet can take the best of both helmets and combine them into one perfect helmet. The cold weather seasonality of my Shoei, the ridiculously big visor that even puts my Arai to shame, good breathability, openness, but protection and safety. And I'm hoping this helmet is the everything and anything. Now, as for cost, here in Japan, there's nowhere to buy this. So I used a website called FC Moto to import the helmet. It cost me about 42,000 yen when I bought it. It was on sale, and that's just around 400 US dollars. Between shipping and import when it arrived, it cost me about 8,000 yen, somewhere in the ballpark of $80. So all in all, for me to get this, I spent a little over $500. That makes this the most expensive of my helmets. Let's talk about whether or not it was worth the money. When I say it's new, you see that really nice shine to it. I think you might even see me reflecting in it. It's a month old. It's closing in on a thousand kilometers. So not as tried and tested as my Arai, not as my Shoei, but as you saw with those two, I did a lot more mods to it. This has no modifications. I have not even put the pin lock in yet. This is as you see it. So if you want the long and the short of what is this helmet, go and look into the Nolan N87. Imagine it was made of carbon fiber and there is this. And I don't think there's that many differences beyond that. The price isn't even that different. It's only an extra about 100 US dollars and it's not like the Nolan is fiberglass so it's like do you need to spend to go about fiberglass it's polycarbonate now there's nothing wrong with that in the right situation but polycarbonate versus fiberglass I have tested it unfortunately <laughs> uh, fiberglass is better carbon fiber is supposed to be better it's definitely lighter and so that's the first thing I want to say is being carbon fiber on the box, I think it said 1,200 or 250 grams in the most basic setup for this helmet. In the current setup with the pin lock, it's 1,400 or 450. But I will say this as it is compared to my other two helmets, exactly as you saw them in those videos, this feels lighter. It feels noticeably lighter. Like I, I can tell I have less weight on my head and that's a safety feature. The less weight on your head in a crash, or even long distance straining your neck and back, the safer you are, the better it is for your health. As for safety, I'm not going to get into the safety beyond saying a few small things. First, I'll try to link a video from Ryan F9 where he tests a Nolan N70 for the chin bar safety. We'll get to that soon. It, it did great, it did fine. This is PJ homologated from ECE. It's the most current ECE standard, so it is safe as a full face helmet. And X-Lite is essentially Nolan's 
high-end racing division, X-Lite makes carbon fiber helmets for MotoGP. If MotoGP is okay with your worksmanship, me and my simple Japanese speed limits should be plenty safe and plenty happy. Now for the features, as far as sound goes, you would think this gigantic face shield and everything is going to be super loud. And yes, but no. I'll say yes, it is similar to my Arrive. Now that's known as a not quiet helmet. It's not terribly loud. It's not a bell bullet, which my boss owns, but it is not Showa GTR quiet. Again, not fair. I'm comparing it to the loudest full face helmet from the bell and one of the quietest from the Showa. But for me, it's fine. I can ride up to 100 with no earplugs and I'm not worried. I am on a naked bike. I use it on my wife's naked bike, so it's a truly naked bike. But on longer trips, I always have earplugs or earbuds with the silicone tip to sound things out. So let's go through the features and start from the top down as we did with the others. This top has a lot less going on than the others. Part of that is art. I like this as pure carbon. I'm not going to customize this like the others, he says. I got white helmets before so I could customize them, but I like this as just carbon. I work with carbon for a living, so it's kind of cool, but this has a lot less going on. So up top, you have this big forehead vent, and I will say it works great. Way better than my Shoei, almost as good as my Arai. I'm very happy. It's a big scoop that pulls in plenty of air, and if you turn it around, you get this, which doesn't open or close. It's just more x light more names and stuff made in Italy by hand, all that, but out vents. I don't believe they close. I haven't found a way to close. This is a separate piece, but I think it's like the Arai, weak plastic designed to break off in a crash and protect you. So I'm not going to play with it. It's not an issue. Going down, you have the visor, which is massive, okay? It doesn't have anything special like the Arai, but it is huge. Here I'm showing you what it looks like while wearing the helmet. For some of you, you're not going to like how much people can see your face. For some of you, you will. There's a theory that wearing such an open face helmet can be safer because people can see your face more and they can see you as a human being. Obviously with the internal visor set in the down position, that's slightly less humanizing, but this is what it looks like when I'm taking the jaw off and putting the jaw back on, and this is what it looks like to other people. It's very interesting when I'm driving around Tokyo, I've noticed people are being more polite with me, giving me more personal space. Maybe it's a coincidence, but I've also noticed some funny reactions when people look to their left or their right and suddenly see a blue-eyed white guy staring back at them. With my Shoei and my Arai, when I'm coming to the stoplights, I have to open them because at night, between the LED stoplights in Japan and all the LED headlights from the Tokyo cars, it creates some glares that are hard to see, so I have to ride open face, especially when I'm filtering. I don't on this. The first reason would be it's brand new, so it just hasn't gotten the scratches or anything, but I don't see the glare coming from scratches on the other two. The second reason would be it does feel like it's much closer to my face. My chin's almost touching the chin bar, but not quite. Being that much closer and with the slight roundness in every direction, it seems easier to see out of than the others and it doesn't get glare because everything's straight from my eye line. And the visor comes off easier than both. So the Shoei takes a bit of finagling. You need to use screws on the Arai. If you open the visor all the way up, there's a button here, you just press it and it comes out. And you can take it off both sides, super quick and easy to clean. Putting it back in is a bit of a trick, but I'm getting used to it. But yeah, it opens and unlike the Arai, when this massive shield opens all the way, it really does. You barely see the shield at all. It's truly open. It's water resistant. I've ridden in the rain. It's fine. No issues. Now, if we keep going down the helmet, let's wait a second. Sorry about that. I took a quick break because I forgot to get the pin lock before we started and I had to go look for it. I found it. Before the pin lock, this side covers, I have spares. That came in the box. I have a little booklet, a lot of Italian. I saw Spanish. I didn't look too hard, didn't find the English, but at least there's Spanish. I'm sure there's English somewhere. Let's turn it forward again and talk about what's wrong with my Arai. Yes, I said Arai, because if you saw that video, the pin lock ruins my life. And I haven't used this pin lock. I'm taking it out of the bag for the first time right now, so the yellow is just the protective layer, but 
pin lock is a lot smaller than the visor. Now if you include the chin bar in it, it's reasonable. It's probably big enough. It sits close enough to your face that I think it will work pretty good for what it is, but it's not the full helmet. I'm sure like the Arai, they had to cut it down to keep the helmet that close to your face to open and close the helmet. Hopefully it won't scratch my helmet like my Arai's pin lock does. This pin lock came free with the helmet, unlike my Arai and like my Shoei. Again, I haven't put it in, so is it a good pin lock? Is it a crappy pin lock? I don't have that answer yet, but I do intend to use this helmet quite extensively, so if I get to the point where I've used the pin lock, I'll make a small video updating maybe when this helmet hits its five or 10,000 kilometer birthday so that it's got a little more mileage under it. That being said, let's move on and let's open the helmet. Now, opening and closing, I like it better than my Shoei and my Arai with a butt. So first, it closes really easy, it opens really easy, it snaps really easy. There's a little right here, if you can see that circle, that's a little divot that it pops into to seal shut. It doesn't snap shut and hold shut like my Arai and Shoei, but I'm not gonna hold it against them. I understand the safety reason the other two do it, but for me and my peace of mind, I like this better. The other thing that I'll complain about is if you look, when it's open just one click, that's not a very small click. It's closed, it's open. Now what I found is I can stick my finger in the helmet and close it, and there you go, it's balanced between closed and open. That's perfect for no fogging when I'm riding without the pin lock. But if it's closed all the way, it has, again, another huge air vent. So. If you can see that, let's open it again. These three channels, that's where the air comes through, and I do feel it. I feel it a lot. Now let's set it down so I don't drop it because now we're talking about the chin. You know, the internal visor with it open, there is, I haven't found adjusters for the internal visor yet. So I don't know if I can stop it from chopping my nose, but I can readjust the way the helmet sits. But these red buttons, you've noticed them, I'm sure. There's no pull away cheek pads like on the other two helmets, but what there is is a pull away face. And you saw I did that without even touching the full helmet. This comes right off, so it won't break your neck even worse if you're in a bad crash. I'm sure my mom doesn't like a third week in a row of talking about motorcycle broken necks, but this is an easy way to get it off, easy way to put it on and off. Slipping this back on is quite simple. You have to bend it a little bit in to fit the holes. You get the first hole, you get the second hole, and you just push it. It's strong, it's on. Again, I'll reference the Ryan F9 video for, is this safe? He hit it with a three iron and it didn't damage the melon inside. So I'll assume my melon's fine. I'm never gonna go over 130. I'm not saying I've gone 130 in Japan. That would be illegal. But what I am saying is, say I visit the US where we have to find miles in our lives. I think this is safe enough for my riding. Your mileage may vary. If this is a safety feature you don't like, don't get the helmet. But the reason I got it with no intention of riding open-faced, there's nothing like this on the market with this kind of visor, this kind of visibility, this lightweightness. And those of you saying, what about the Bell Bullet? Well, look at owners of that. It whistles, it's got nothing to stop the wind, it's loud, it's not weather resistant, you can't close the forehead vents. This is a real world daily helmet for normal riding, normal people, not just a fashion statement. If we flip it back here, the last two things is here's the chin curtain. I like it. It lets the smallest little bit of air through, but it also will hit right near my chin. So if I grow a beard for the winter, it's really warm. Or if I just wear my thin normal scarf, it's fine. Now let's complain about what I did to the other two bikes. My Shoei comes with a ratchet like this, and I custom put a ratchet on my Arai to void that warranty. This is a ratchet. It opens and closes, but when it's tight against my chin and kind of pulling and I open it, it won't open. So you have to push it down and it's kind of hard to do with one hand, but you pull the switch to open it and you see how it's kind of getting stuck on me as I pull. So you have to pull this down, pull it away, all while it's squishing your chin. 
or double chin, depending who you are. But it's still easier than a D-ring once you're used to it. But compared to my Amazon special that I put on Arai and what came with Shoei, this being the most expensive helmet has the worst strap. It's not one-handed. And it has high visibility right here, which is nice. The cheek pads, are they good? Are they bad? Well, what kind of face do you have? For me, right here and right here, squeeze my cheeks a little bit. It's getting better, so I'll call that new helmet feel. But on a true full face, the pads go a little further forward. This one doesn't have that, so they end right at my cheekbones. Again, it's not a deal breaker. It's not a huge hassle, but I do notice it. I notice it every time. And another thing, is it safety? Is it quietness? This is a lot quieter than I thought it would be. It is a little quieter than my Arai, and it's the seal you get here. It's such a seal that my head barely fits through this. My ears are folded in half and I have to readjust them. The obvious solution is, again, pull it off, put the helmet on, and put it back together. You're all good to go. But it is a bit of a tight squeeze for my head. Maybe it's my head. As a note, I don't think I said it in any of my videos. All three of these helmets are large. They're all large. The Arai and the Shoei are large in Japan. I don't know if that's different overseas. This is an Italian large helmet. This one fits just as good as the other ones as far as my head, ignoring the cheek thing. As far as being an open face helmet, this is 90 to 98% an open face helmet when you're sitting inside. I can't really see up here unless I'm really looking for it. This chin, I barely see it, but I have to literally start trying to stare at my seat that I'm sitting on to see it. So it's really nothing. It's really not there. My Arai ruined my Shoei's normal visor because the Arai is such a big visor. This is even bigger. It's slowly starting to ruin my Arai for me. You choose how Italian quality goes up against Japanese quality. For this, their reputation seems to hold up, so I'm happy. Will I get the same mileage that I got out of the others? Only time will tell. The weather I've used it in, again, I've only had it for a month. The month of September and the first bit of October. By the time this video's come out, it'll probably be closer to two months. But I've had it down to around 16 degrees Celsius with a bit of rain, bit of fog. It was great. I opened up the chin and did that little trick with the visor. It was fine. I've had it up to 35 where this open, that open. Maybe this even a little open, but it's fine. And that's with the chin curtain installed. So it's great. It's really, really a pleasant helmet. I don't have any regrets about buying it, but let's get into the things that are not perfect because it's not perfect. There's no perfect helmet, but there could be. So the first problem is the ratchet, like I just explained. I could always just cut that off at some point and put on a new one like I've done. I'm not that fanatical yet. So if you look at a bell bullet where it's got a similar sized face shield, but a solid chin, I wish there was this helmet exactly, but not modular. I don't plan on riding like that. You're probably watching this video because you are interested in that. I am not. I've ridden with modulars a lot when I was younger. I had a bucket helmet from no name whatever. I was young. I had a lot of posters of Harleys. And then I had a crash in a full face bell helmet. I think it was a bell qualifier. I was going over 70 miles an hour. I destroyed the helmet, but I had no damage. The entire jaw was scratched up. You could see the foam through the jaw. I wish this had a fully full face, but again, Ryan F9 has made me confident in the safety. So it's not a default. It's just a lack of options. So I know that there's a way to raise the internal visor. Let's just open this up. But when it comes down, it ever so slightly hits my nose. But if I raise it up, what happens is it leaves a little gap here where light gets through. So I'm just going to tilt the helmet a bit more forward than I normally wear. I wear my helmets kind of leaned forward a bit, if that makes sense. But again, not a deal breaker because it really keeps out the sun when it comes to sunset riding. And yeah, the, the little snaps on the visor, that's closed. That's a big open. That's if I squeeze my fingers, that's three fingers. I would say that's two to three centimeters. But again, stick one finger in, close it on your finger, pull your finger out. The wind hasn't closed it yet. It's just a nice thing that could be better. Let's wrap this one up. Is it a good helmet? Do I recommend it? 
Well, again, I've had it for one month. Can I say the good, the bad, and the queen compared to my Arai, compared to my Shoei? No, I can't. But from what I got, yes, I like it. And I wanted to rush this review to not wait a year or two because I don't see any out there. In English, I don't see any. And I'll put a link for FC Moto where I bought it in the description because they do ship globally as best as I know. So if you really like the Nolan, but you wish it was made of carbon fiber, here it is and here's the option. Until next time, thanks for watching. That's all the helmets I own right now. This has been Kaidu Rider.